I'm sure by now we've all seen the Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer reveal and are eagerly looking forward to June 20th. There's a lot of things to unpack, so let's get right into it and first talk about the things we do know for sure. It has been confirmed from Miyazaki himself that there will be, quote, over 10 new boss fights, end quote. I'm sure we've gotten a glimpse of at least a couple of them from the trailer, such as this lion-faced creature, potentially this dancer-type humanoid individual, down to Mesmer himself, likely to be the ultimate and final boss of the DLC. For reference, there are well over 100 boss fights in the base game, and the vast majority aren't required in order to actually beat it. We will likely get a fresh roster of new terrifying bosses with movesets that are certainly going to take most of us several attempts to learn, unless you're incredibly patient and have a ton of healing flasks. For those of you that are still worried that we're going to be able to just plow through the new content, we have been assured that there will be a boss equivalent of Melania's level. It's time for Let Me Solo Her to step into the limelight again, perhaps? Speaking of trying to move quickly through the DLC, I don't think that will be happening. They will be introducing a new attack power upgrade system, apparently similar to what From Software has done in the past with Sekiro. To put it simply, you will only be able to level up your attack after defeating certain bosses. With the introduction of this system, a lot of people, myself included, are highly recommending to not play Shadow of the Erd Tree on your new game plus seven. The DLC takes place mid-game, before we become the Elden Lord. As such, it makes sense that the difficulty of the enemies will scale with whatever your world is set to. We will all be going in with the same basic attack power until we defeat our first boss there, yes, but it may be up to what new game plus that you're on that determines how much health and poise damage they take, along with how much damage they deal. I'm not saying it will be impossible with your maxed out character, but it being maxed out may not make much of a difference here. There's plenty of time between now and June to get a new character through the story and collect all the things you will want and need to enter the Shadow Realm. I hear the Shadow Realm is lovely this time of year. Not to mention, we'll have eight new weapon types to test out and level up. Now keep in mind the wording. This is not eight new weapons. This is weapon types. We currently have 32 if you include tools and torches. Don't forget that straight swords, great swords, colossal swords, thrusting swords, heavy thrusting swords, curved swords, and curved great swords are all their own categories with their own movesets. And we are getting eight new ones. I can't convey how excited I am to see what we're going to get and how it can vastly change everyone's style of playing. I mentioned that the DLC will happen mid-game, which means how do we access it? We've been told that we will need to defeat both Radon and Moog. Moog makes sense as he is guarding Mikola's cocoon in the Mogwin Palace and we will need to touch his arm in order to travel to this Shadowland. But we will be curious to see how precisely Radon plays into this. It sounds like the general size of what we will be getting will be similar to Limgrave, which is really a pretty generous size. And given that, we have also been told it will take about 30 hours to beat. But given how a decent chunk of us got lost, repeatedly got our butts stomped, and wanted to explore every nook and cranny of every single cave, I'd say it's probably safe to say let's aim for maybe twice that. That about covers all we know for the time being. June is a whole three months away, and we aren't sure if we're going to get any further teasers of things to come or not. So in the meantime, if you're looking for somewhere to learn about the easiest room form guides, or if you're looking how to get OP early as an intelligence build, or if you just really want to fight with bubbles, look no further than our own channel. We have many different videos on the topics I just listed, along with some boss fight guides or more advanced status type builds. We will be keeping an eye out and an ear to the ground for any further information on Shadow of the Erd Tree, so be sure to subscribe to stay on top of it with us. Before you go, there are two crucial other creators you need to investigate and be familiar with before this DLC expansion drops. One of those is Vadi Vidya, who makes incredible videos that are basically movie productions that do deep dives into the lore of Elden Ring, and naturally he's already made a video speculating things to come and hopefully be explained in Shadow of the Erdtree. If you have played the game only once, you probably had little to no understanding as to what was actually happening, and all of his videos will explain that and then some. The next one to be familiar with is Fextra Life's wiki page for Elden Ring. They have an interactive map and expansive lists so that if you're ever looking for something or somewhere specific, this is your one-stop shop to locating it. Weapons, armor, talismans, the location of a cave or catacomb, have Fextra open at all times to help make your journey through the Lands Between simpler. That's hopefully a good amount of resources and info to help you prep for Shadow of the Erd Tree. Enjoy getting your excitement reignited and working on a potential new playthrough. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, because as we all know, time is runes.